Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're here in part six of our Hammond Volcano SLR build. And so far we've got the uh, base of the engine bay all painted up. So we've got the uh, sway bars and braces installed here. Uh, we've also got some various different you know, tones and shades of black or dark gray about the cock. Uh, about around it and then we've got the aluminum painted on here and a uh, different shade of like a, an iron as well over where the, uh, the supercharger is uh, so we also have the rest of the chassis all built together so we've got I put the plate on just so that I can you know have it on there um, but we've got the the main tub of the chassis all primed and ready to go uh, as well as all the other various parts here as well all primed um, any of the parts that are getting painted with the um, our, our zero paints color here so this is a this is our two part kind of paint solution so we have one part one uh, I was shaking it up in the spray booth um, so that's just like a, a standard yellow and then we've also got this part here which is actually the pearlescent that goes over top of that um, prior to putting on a clear coat so um, we're gonna any of the parts that are getting sprayed that we're primed with uh, Badger uh, the Steinal Res um, we just did a 50-50 mix of the gray and the white um, and then we're gonna go ahead and start painting those up so everything Everything's ready to go, everything's primed, everything's been uh, sanded over, and we went with a, uh, uh, a fine polishing sandpaper just to kind of get rid of all the bumps and any sort of loose debris that we put on any, any point in the, uh, the spray stage. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the body, the main body's been finished as well. Uh, the only issue that I encountered um, with the, uh, the kit itself from Hobby Design. Um, so with the uh, addition of the, uh, these new uh, vents that go on the side, they're supposed to replace the older ones because of just the, the smaller amount of parts would just make it more difficult. Um, so they just molded it as one piece. Um, now when these guys fit on, originally there is a massive gap that is left between you know the forward edge and the uh, uh, the addition from the rear fender so what was needed to do was I went ahead and used some Bondic uh, and then basically built up the, the layers um, you know to, to, to shrink the gap up and then sanded them smooth so you know, now we've got this kind of nice tight gap that looks a little bit more realistic rather than something that was, you know, it was basically out to here, um, except it was more aft, but you know, now we've closed that gap up nice and tight on both sides. Um, that's, you know, an inherent problem with all resin kits is that not everything is going to fit, not everything is going to be straight, uh, and you've got to do some fedangling in order to get that to work. Um, there are these little, I don't know if these were actually intakes on the rear thing or whether they, on the real thing, or whether these were just, you know, an additional part. Uh, but these are two pieces here. This is a photo edge piece and a uh, resin piece that goes over top. Um, and then there's some sort of a, like a little intake strake there. Uh, that was the, the photo edge piece. If you don't have a, a kind of a roller or a curve uh, bending tool, uh, it's extremely hard to fit down by itself so if you have one of those or if you can get your hands on one uh, that's kind of you know highly recommended for uh, you know mo you know almost every application that you would uh, be using photo wash for but uh, especially useful here when you've got I know that that kind of curve that goes across uh, and you need it to be you know sitting nice and flush the the resin part fit on just fine uh, it didn't really need any holding down, but the, the photo edge piece definitely would need uh, some bending skills to get that done. Uh, as well, when you're 
these photo etch pieces, or, sorry, the uh, resin pieces are not completely smooth. Um, I don't think they finished them off well from when they took them out of the 3D printer and then cast it. I think they just went straight from the 3D printer to the casting uh, and didn't bother uh, finishing it off. So that takes a little bit of finishing down uh, because you'll see the streaks and striations from uh, the 3D printing machine. Um, but other than that, um, making sure all the gaps here along where the fenders have been added on. Uh, what I did was I took some, some Mr. Surfacer uh, 500 uh, and then basically just went in there with a nice thick layer of uh, 500, waited for it to go off and dry, and then came over with a, uh, you know, a fairly smooth, you know, s small sanding stick, or not so much stick, but a, a pad, a foam pad, and then uh, worked down the primer, um, so from the body and then from the fenders here as well, and then just kept building that up, uh, so we got a nice tight looking gap in there and it's not just something you know that looks like it's just been plastered on um, the separation between the fender flares um, right here so the the rear bumper and then the forward edge of the chassis uh, on the real cart it exists where that line is in place uh, it is not in the hobby design kit so you have to add that in I just took a fine saw and uh, threw it on to, to carry that line over through the, uh, the addition of the, the over fenders. Um, so that's pretty much it. I don't know if I can... Yeah, you might be able to see here. Just where the tip of my thumb is. And that's, that's how much you had to add on uh, of the Bondic in order to um, you know, close the gaps, so to speak, in between the, the older, fend, uh, the newer fender. Um, and the, uh, the forward edge of it. So that's been done on both sides. Uh, so anyways, that's all done. So we're gonna go ahead and take this into the spray booth and start putting the zero paints, uh, two part pearlescent yellow down. Um, and so for, for zero paints at least, uh, because they're such a hot, um, because these guys are such a hot lacquer paint, uh, you really need to, you know, take your time with them. Um, because we're working with with poly like if you were to spray this just over bare plastic, um, you run the risk of, of crazing the plastic. And what I mean by crazing is it'll do all these funky little wave things, and it'll look like it's just been like, you know, it's kind of just pulling up against itself, um, and that is a pain in the ass to get out. Um, I've had it where I, you know, spray a whole build, uh, and then go to clear coat it, clear coat it, and then by that point, it's already worked through the plastic, and so now I've got a clear coat, uh, you know, two so coats of paint to go through in order to get down to the plastic to sand that back down smooth and then reapply it. That's happened, um, but we've learned from our mistakes. Uh, one kind of way to avoid it is using a good barrier in between your plastic. So if you have your plastic here and you've got your uh, you know, primer layer over top, uh, if you're doing light coats of this, so if you have really good uh, trigger control, uh, so whether it's the airbrush or the, uh, the trigger style, um, then you, you can use a, a lacquer primer like Mr. Surfacer uh, or others, you know, like the Tamiya's uh, to, to, you know, to prime over top of the plastic. What I like to do is I like to, especially with the zeros now, is I like to use a, an acrylic primer, uh, so something like Badger's Steinal Res. Uh, it just gets a better, if I, you know, if I mess up on my, on my trigger control, uh, and I put a little bit too much paint down, it's not going to bleed through the paint and expose the plastic underneath. Uh, it's just a more durable layer against these types of paints, especially. Um, that and the, the Badger Steinal Res stuff is, you know, witchcraft because it somehow, you know, sprays down and dries almost instantly to the touch, but then levels out later on, which is also really great. 
Uh, so if you are going to use it, uh, it's absolutely perfect for the uh, Zero paints as well um, as any other really hot lacquer paints. What I would recommend doing, however, is uh, if you want to make sure that you have any super smooth surface to start working with, uh, to give it at least 24 hours to dry before you go and sand it. It's paintable after about two hours. I've seen people do it, you know, right after spraying. Um, but you won't usually give it about two hours for it to at least bite down uh, to the plastic. But uh, after 24 hours, uh, which is what you want to leave it if you want to sand it down, uh, then you're pre it's pretty much just as sandable and as durable as a lacquer primer is. So, um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and put over uh, part one of the uh, paint here. And then I'll, bring, I'll just bring the body back um, and show you what it kind of looks like. And then from there, uh, we'll go ahead and wait about half an hour. And then we'll go ahead and spray this part two on. Uh, what we're going to use for that is we're going to use a uh, 0.5 millimeter needle. Um, normally with the zero paints the lighter the coats the the better the the finish and the uh, more control you have over the color uh, so we're gonna spray it with a 0.5 millimeter needle at a relatively low PSI of about uh, 7 to 10 um, and then you know go from there um, and especially with uh, one thing to note with uh, any sort of light colors like a yellow or a white uh, you want to make sure that you're you know steady with your lines and you're getting you know even lines across and you're overlapping you know so if your spray patterns this you're not going to jump down to the next um, you know spray pattern because then in between here you might get what's called tiger striping which is uh, you know lighter sh um, layer of paint uh, between the two that shows the primer through and it's not an even color. So what you want to kind of do is overlap the uh, next color by about just under half and then that way you get a nice uh, even coverage. So we'll go ahead and we'll start uh, putting some paint down on this finally. Alright guys, uh, we're back after spraying the uh, first part of our two-tone pearlescent color here. Uh, and as you can see, this is more of a uh, a pale sort of yellow compared to, you know, like a true yellow. Um, and you might also notice that we've got some of these uh, these kind of grayish spots here. Uh, the reason for that is uh, all of these p extra panels that have been added on throughout the uh, kit are actually carbon fiber. So we've got some carbon fiber decals we're going to uh, put on at a later stage. Uh, but before that, we'll put on... Uh, a gunmetal type color just to really bring out the background of the the, the carbon in the actual decal so uh, that's where we're at right now uh, and as you can see the zero paints go on with this sort of satin uh, matte finish um, and really the gloss comes out when you do the clear coats after um, so we're gonna go ahead and spray on our part two now of the uh, yellow so again we'll follow the same steps that we did with this guy uh, which is we're doing two kind of light sort of misty tack coats on all the parts uh, let that sit for about five six minutes and then we come on with a nice heavy coat uh, not too heavy that we're going it's going on wet uh, but you know a, a medium to heavy coat uh, wait for that five six minutes and then put on another uh, medium coat and I did a couple of kind of little dusting touch-up jobs here and there uh, just in places where uh, there needed to be a little bit more paint because some of the primer was showing through um, so yeah, and then we're gonna follow kind of the same process with uh, with the pearlescent yellow now the part that goes on top of this color <clears throat> and uh, we'll come back and visit you guys again when we've got that down and sprayed um, just a you know quick kind of thing because I just realized that um, from those of you who don't normally use zero paints uh, it is well recommended that you shake these things uh, you know for a good long time because you know as you can see here 
Uh, there is sediment still at the bottom, and that's all the pearlescent flake that's part of the color. Uh, so any kind of color that you do use, especially metallics, uh, make sure you, things, you give these things a very good thorough shake uh, to loosen up all of that um, debris there at the bottom. And as you can hear, there is a ball bearing in there. Uh, so you know, you're shaking it one way, and then kind of rotate it a little bit, and shake it for a couple of minutes on the next side, and that'll hopefully work its way around. If need be, you can always kind of jiggle it back and forth and in circles to kind of get the ball bearing rolling around and loosen up some of the metallics. So uh, that's just a kind of a quick thing to note for uh, those of you that uh, wouldn't normally be using these kinds of paints, that you need to thoroughly mix them in order to get all that sediment off the bottom. So back to the spray booth. Okay guys, we're uh, back from the spray booth now. Uh, we've applied both parts, uh, one and two, to the, uh, the necessary areas of the Hammond SLR. And uh, I think we'll bring you in close here and see if you can pick out that pearlescent that we've got going on. So we've got it everywhere that we need to. Uh, any of the parts that are kind of faded, like down here, these are all going to be covered up by uh, carbon uh, fiber decals afterwards. Um, but yeah, there you can see a lovely pearl that's gone over top of here. And this is a great, I like this color. Uh, it matches, you know, the real life kind of pictures of the yellow version of the Hammond Volcano. Um, so I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Um, one thing to note for the uh, pearlescence, let me just take the glove off here. Um, one thing to note for the pearlescence is um, because there's metallic flake in here, um, now you want to make sure that you know you're spraying in not just you know a monochromatic, um, a mono direction. So you're not just spraying you know forwards all the way across and then leaving it. Um, especially with metallics, you want to go you know for instance we went across here and then we went up and down and then we went diagonally and then the other way diagonally uh, and what that does is basically rather than you know you know if we're looking at our paint layer and the paints going the metallic flakes are going in flat well that's just going to give you in one certain direction you'll see all the metallic flake uh, turn out and others it will just look plain and bland um, but for instance with uh, what we've done here is we've basically layered the uh, the flakes in you know different directions so you're gonna get it, it basically makes all the flakes kind of stand out in any direction that you look at it um, and another kind of note on that as well is uh, here on the uh, the dash you know we can see you know the metallic flake and how it's showing up here uh, but we've all I've also kind of done a little like tester to show you guys uh, so here on the left uh, portion right in here uh, you can see, you know, very fine metallic flake. It's very light. It's not quite heavy. Um, but on here, this is about three or four uh, of those diagonal passes. This is just a, you know, a single swipe. Um, but here you can see what happens when you add all those variant directions in. Um, and that's another thing to note, too, is, is how how much of the pearlescent you actually want uh, on the actual paint job. If you want it light, then yeah, definitely uh, bump down the, uh, the air pressure uh, and go a little farther away from the, the model, uh, so that way you get lighter layers. Um, but if you want it to uh, stand out a bit and have a little bit more vibrancy, uh, I think we got it pretty close with, with this guy here. Uh, then again, the more layers and the closer you go to the, the model. Um, so that's where we're at and uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, basically take all of our parts here um, and we're going to use what I'm going to use actually is, uh, is this guy here fast mask basically any sort of liquid mask and what we're going to do is uh, apply it over certain areas of the uh, the model, um, you know, in, in some of the interior pieces here, for instance, uh, right around the edges of the uh, the door cards, 
um, anywhere where we're not going to be or where we're going to be spraying um, uh, on the interior at least uh, we're going to be spraying that uh, sort of dark gray dark matte gray to match the sorry about that kitty where he wasn't supposed to be anyways uh, so for the interior when we have that kind of matte uh, dark gray uh, kind of Alcantara looking uh, color um, and we've got these certain areas where we want the uh, pearlescent to stay uh, we're just going to use the fast mask and uh, you know paint over those areas and then that way we can peel it off later uh, when we go to do final coats um, but for instance on something like say the uh, the body or the hood here where we're going to be painting these uh, flares uh, you know in that gunmetal color uh, then we're going to, you know, tape off, uh, you know, the entire hood and then spray that kind of gunmetal down. Uh, so it's it's going to depend on, on where we do it. So, for instance, um, you know, on the exterior, we're going to use, you know, masking tape and uh, tape over all the parts that we're going to keep the yellow uh, and then spray the gunmetal and we'll go through the clear coats uh, for stuff like the interior, um, you know, door cards. And then for the, the top of the engine here. Uh, we're just going to use the fast mask to uh, isolate those areas and then go over with the uh, the other colors. So, um, you know, we'll go ahead and actually demonstrate that for you. So I'm going to clear the bench. I'll get the uh, the fast mask out, and uh, we'll show you how we're going to apply that. Okay, guys, we're uh, back from the spray booth now. Uh, we've applied both parts, uh, one and two to the, uh, the necessary areas of the Hammond SLR and uh, I think we'll bring you in close here and see if you can pick out that pearlescent that we've got going on so we've got it everywhere that we need to uh, any of the parts that are kind of faded like down here these are all going to be covered up by uh, carbon uh, fiber decals afterwards um, yeah, there you can see a lovely pearl that's gone over top of here. And this is a great, I like this color. Uh, it matches, you know, the real life kind of pictures of the yellow version of the Hammond Volcano. Um, so I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Um, one thing to note for the uh, pearlescence, let me just take the glove off here. Um, one thing to note for the pearlescence is um, because there's metallic flake in here, um, now you want to make sure that, you know, you're spraying in not just, you know, a monochromatic, um, a mono direction. So you're not just spraying, you know, forwards all the way across and then leaving it. Um, especially with metallics, you want to go, you know, for instance, we went across here and then we went up and down and then we went diagonally and then the other way diagonally. Uh, and what that does is basically rather than, you know, you know, if we're looking at our paint layer and the paints going the metallic flakes are going in flat well that's just going to give you in one certain direction you'll see all the metallic flake uh, turn out in others it'll just look plain and bland um, but for instance with uh, what we've done here is we've basically layered the uh, the flakes in you know different directions so you're going to get it basically makes all the flakes kind of stand out in any direction that you look at it um, and another kind of note on that as well is uh, here on the uh, the dash you know we can see you know the metallic flake and how it's showing up here uh, but we've all I've also kind of done a little like tester to show you guys uh, so here on the left uh, portion right in here uh, you can see you know very fine metallic flake it's very light it's not quite heavy um, but on here this is about three or four uh, of those diagonal passes. This is just a you know a single swipe, um, but here you can see what happens when you add all those variant directions in. Um, and that's another thing to note too is is how how much of the pearlescent you actually want uh, on the actual paint job. If you want it light, then yeah, definitely uh, bump down the uh, the air pressure. Uh, and go a little farther away from the 
the model uh, so that way you get lighter layers um, but if you want it to uh, stand out a bit and have a little bit more vibrancy uh, I think we got it pretty close with with this guy here uh, then again the more layers and the closer you go to the, the model um, so that's where we're at and uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, basically take all of our parts here um, and we're going to use what I'm going to use actually is uh, is this guy here fast mask basically any sort of liquid mask and what we're going to do is uh, apply it over certain areas of the uh, the model um, you know in, in some of the interior pieces here for instance uh, right around the edges of the uh, the door cards um, anywhere where we're not going to be or where we're going to be spraying um, uh, on the interior at least uh, we're going to be spraying that uh, sort of dark gray dark matte gray to match the Sorry about that kitty where he wasn't supposed to be. Anyways, uh, so for the interior, when we have that kind of matte, uh, dark gray, uh, kind of Alcantara looking uh, color, um, and we've got these certain areas where we want the uh, pearlescent to stay, uh, we're just gonna use the fast mask and uh, you know paint over those areas, and then that way we can peel it off later uh, when we go to do final coats. Um, but for instance, on something like, say, the, uh, the body or the hood here, where we're going to be painting these uh, flares, uh, you know, in that gunmetal color, uh, then we're going to, you know, tape off, uh, you know, the entire hood and then spray that kind of gunmetal down. Uh, so it's, it's going to depend on, on where we do it. So for instance, um, you know, on the exterior, we're going to use, you know, masking tape and uh, tape over all the parts that we're going to keep the yellow. Uh, and then spray the gunmetal and we'll go through the clear coats uh, for stuff like the interior um, you know door cards and then for the the top of the engine here uh, we're just going to use the fast mask to uh, isolate those areas and then go over with the uh, the other colors so um, you know we'll go ahead and actually demonstrate that for you so I'm going to clear the bench I'll get the uh, the fast mask out and uh, we'll show you how we're going to apply that Okay, so bench is cleared, uh, and we're going to go ahead and start, uh, you know, masking off uh, certain areas of the dash here. So we've got our fast mask here. We're going to open that up. And what we're using, I'm using a, a finer Tamiya brush, or sorry, testers. Uh, the Tamiya and testers ones are fairly similar. Um, but we're going to use a finer brush just so that we can uh, pinpoint where exactly applying this and we're basically going to just take it and apply it not in a th thick manner but in you know a relatively kind of thin layer um, we're going to come back and do a second coat because uh, you can apply coats on top of each other like so it doesn't matter if we get every spot right away uh, we can come back and take care of those layers. So I'm just going to go to another area and wipe off some of the excess. Okay. And this is a useful kind of technique to use, um, especially when you've got um, you know lighter areas. Um, you know, for instance, here in the interior, where uh, it would be quite difficult to come in and use a, uh, a darker, a lighter color like this yellow over top of a uh, a darker color like a, a dark gray or a, a gunmetal. Uh, so it's kind of necessary in the painting process to um, you know plan out how what colors you're going to be using and where and uh, and how you're going to uh, apply
apply them. So you know, in this case, when we have a, a darker color as more the dominant color, we're going to you know, mask off the, the yellow as best we can and then spray the darker color down. But if we were to have, uh, say, yellow as a dominant color, uh, then we would, you know, then we'd go ahead and we'd use, um, you know, we'd kind of do that last. So, yeah. So that's basically how we do it. Uh, and then we can come over, you know, say here for instance, and put a second coat on just to make it nice and thick. Uh, and then this way, we know we are covered. So we'll go ahead and start doing that on the, the rest of the parts, and we'll come back when that's all done. Okay, so we're back. We've uh, gone ahead and put on the mask all to all the areas that we're kind of isolating. Uh, for instance, the top of the engine here, uh, inside the door cards, we've finished all that. Uh, and for the areas that are like a little bit too big for it, we've gone ahead and masked up the uh, fenders in the areas that are going to be covered by carbon fiber decals. So uh, for that color we're going to be using to me is XF56 metallic gray. Uh, it's just going to give a good brilliant backing for the carbon fiber decal. So we'll go ahead and spray that gray and then we'll come back and show you what we have afterwards. Okay so we've gone ahead and we've sprayed the, uh, the metallic gray onto our various parts that are going to get covered in um, the carbon fiber. Um, now what we've kind of left on the nose here, uh, we've left this just blank. It is quite a complex sort of shape to get tape around, uh, so we'll just go ahead and brush paint that as well as the, uh, the winglets here. Um, the hood came out fine, that whole center section and the fenders is going to turn out really well. Same thing with the uh, side fenders and the vents. Um, now the interesting thing uh, is going to be painting the uh, the spoiler which is completely carbon fiber. Uh, so we've painted that all metallic silver and we have the body all done and ready to go as well. Uh, so we did have one minor issue. Um, you can tape and prep and detack and have everything ready to go but you're still gonna have even to the best of us have issues so as you can see here you know we've got a slight little chip out of the paint where it's lifted uh, straight off of the, the primer uh, so that could have been down to just not cleaning off the surface in that area properly um, which is more than likely what's happened so we'll have to sand that down respray it and uh, get it all done again but you know, as you can see all the other parts turned out just fine and so we can go ahead and move along uh, so now prior to actually putting the uh, the decals down we're just going to give it a, a, a quick gloss coat uh, for that uh, we're just using like the regular uh, model master uh, lacquers I find they're good for just like the quick um, you know, a quick uh, kind of gloss over just before we put uh, stuff down. You can also use uh, Tamiya's gloss, um, and you know, you could use some uh, Mr. Color GX stuff as well. Uh, that's just the stuff I have on hand, so uh, I've got to actually go and pick up more Tamiya gloss and all that. So, um, yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, and in the next kind of part, uh, we're going to be looking at detailing uh, the interior the interior pieces. The color we're going to use for that is going to be a very dark gray, so this German gray here. It's going to be XF63, uh, and we'll use that as the uh, interior alclad color, and that'll even whiten up a little bit more when we use quite a, uh, a chalky type of uh, uh, kind of matte coat over everything and that'll make it look like it's Alcantara um, and then we'll also work on getting all of the the stitching detail in there so all of that stitching detail that we've done in and around we'll uh, we'll get that um, 
you know, color, color matched with uh, some oils. Uh, we'll do the stitching in there as well. Uh, so that's, that's going to be our next move. Um, I'll kind of work on the carbon decals after that. I just want to get the interior and the engine all ready to go and finished up and then uh, we can actually move along to getting you know, the carbon decals down on the body, getting it glossed and then having everything come together. So that's what's coming up in uh, part seven, I believe it is. Yeah, part seven. We'll be uh, doing all the interior. So thanks again for watching guys and have a good day.